Hello, it's Sean, Adam, and Ryan here, and our topic for our video is the fluid mechanics principle behind how a curveball works. Let's give a brief overview of what we're going to cover today. First, we're going to define exactly exactly what a curveball is, give some brief history about the curveball, show how to throw a curveball so you can master it after this video, define the fluid mechanics of a curveball, and then give some fun videos that are used from pitchers in the MLB today. What is a curveball? Curveball is a type of pitch used in baseball. The ball is heading towards home plate, then suddenly drops, causing the batter to miss the ball. It is called a curveball because the ball curves towards the ground. There are many variations of the curveball, some that go straight tw down 12 to 6, like on a, from a 12 on a clock to the 6, or like a slider, which is more side to side. All right, now we're going to talk about the history of the curveball. It was first invented in the early 1870s by Fred Goldsmith or Candy Cummings. It's often debated who threw the pitch first. The reporters way back in the day first described the pitch as extremely hard to hit because it simply does not travel in a straight line. Every pitcher today utilizes a variation of the curveball. Adam Wainwright of the St. Louis Cardinals and Gio Gonzalez of the Washington Nationals both throw a different variation. Adam Wainwright uses the 12 to 6 version and Gio Gonzalez the 10 to 4 version. This will be explained in the clip following this. Hitter is buckling. So what exactly is the 12 to 6 and this is back to Hanley Ramirez. The height of the ball, the bottom of the ball. 12 to 6 just like you would see on a clock. The rotation of the ball is a more over the top rotation and it's a down break. So that makes sense. That's the overhand 12 to like 6. 12 to 6. Okay. 12 on the clock, 6 to know. is more straight over the top. 12 to 6. Look at Geo's. You're looking at a clock. It's more 10 to 4. It's a sweeping breaking ball. So you're probably asking yourself, how do you throw a curveball? Well, you're going to want to hold the, the baseball with your first three fingers. And then when you release the ball, you want to flick your wrist downwards. This will put the needed topspin on the baseball so that it will suddenly drop when it hits home plate. Now we are going to examine the fluid mechanics of the curveball by discussing how it relates to Bernoulli and the Magnus effect. When throwing a curveball, angular or rotational velocity is indirectly proportional to tangential velocity. Relating the curveball to Bernoulli's principle, where a fluid moves faster, there is less pressure. On one side of the ball, the air is moving faster, resulting in the other side having more pressure. This forces the ball to travel in the direction with less pressure. The force that pushes it is defined as the Magnus force, and we will discuss that force in the next slide. If there is added rotation, then there will be a greater difference in pressure, resulting in a greater curve. The curve ball is slow because the ball is pushing the air forward, but drag is pushing the ball back resulting in the ball slowing down more. The stitches change the path of the ball because they make more streamlines where they are. These streamlines move faster. The Magnus effect, put simply, is a frequently witnessed occurrence where a spinning ball curves away from its primary flight path. Top spin produces a downward swerve of a moving ball that is greater than produced by just gravity. Interestingly, backspin will cause the ball to rise. So there are other ways you can throw a baseball that when thrown they will also move but in different ways. As you can see the curveball has a lot of movement going from the top of the strike zone to the bottom of the strike zone. But there are other types such as the screwball that moves a little to the side too. This curveball is an example of a 12 to 6 curveball whereas the slurve you can sort of see how it would be a, a good example of a 10-4 curveball. The way the ball moves all depends on how the ball is spinning in the air. So now you know the fluid mechanics behind the curveball and you also know how to throw a curveball. But you might be wondering how do you hit a curveball? Well sometimes the batters can recognize the, the pitch by the pitcher's arm motion and they can anticipate the movement of the baseball. But more importantly, baseball players must understand the fluid mechanics behind the curveball. 
Without fluid mechanics, they wouldn't be able to understand how the baseball moves through the air. Well, now that you understand the fluid mechanics of how a curveball works, I think I'm going to head outside and go play some baseball. Hope you enjoyed the video.